Hi there, I'm Andrew Forth, I'm the Head of Policy and Public Affairs at the RBA and I'm here with a quick update on some of the work that we've been doing over the last few weeks with government. Um, it's been a really busy few weeks, so I've got quite a lot of topics to cover today. Um, I'm going to start off by telling you a bit more about the fire safety seminar that we held earlier this week in conjunction with the Association of Its Insurers, RICS, CIOB, the Local Government Association and the National Fire Chiefs Council. We're also very grateful to have Clive Betts, the Chair of the Housing Communities and Local Government Select Committee join the event. Um, the whole purpose of the event was to demonstrate to government the sort of wide range of views that are out there on what needs to be done to improve this vitally important piece of legislation. Um, over the coming weeks and months Parliament will be debating both fire safety and building safety regulations and while there are some definite improvements in there there's still a long way to go to address the concerns that members and others have raised with us. Um, to that end on Thursday of this week, Adrian Dobson, our Executive, Executive Director for Membership and Professional Services, gave evidence to the House of Commons Bill Committee looking at the Fire Safety Bill. Um, it was a really good session and a video and link to evidence will be available on our website. Um, we've also been engaging with government on some of the issues affecting the future of the profession. Um, I want to talk a little bit around the work we've been doing on the Migration Advisory Committee. This is the group that advises the government on who should be able to come and work in the United Kingdom. Um, they're currently consulting on something called the Shortage Occupation List, which is a list of professions which are deemed to be in demand in the UK, as the name suggests, and for which uh, there is a slightly more straightforward migration process. Um, as the UK leaves the EU, this list is obviously going to be incredibly important because I think one of the things that we've been really clear is that it can't be an either or. We need to make sure that the UK has access to global talent, but also that our education systems and our training processes are improved so that the profession has access to the best talent and it has access to a more diverse range of talent. Um, so we'll be looking at things like education reforms, the apprenticeships and some of the work that can be done alongside the other professions. We've also responded to an inquiry from the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy on the green economy and in terms of what can be done to make sure that when the UK emerges from the COVID-19 crisis we actually emerge with a better and stronger society. Um, we've made the point that there is a real need and an opportunity to address the fact that 19 million homes in this country need improvements to their energy efficiency. We've made the case for retrofit, but also for things like a mandatory use of post-occupancy evaluation in new developments and improvements to how we measure energy efficiency. Um, given that we're coming up on 12 months since the RBA Council declared a climate emergency, we think it's now is the real opportunity to push government to go further on this. Finally, and as you would expect, Brexit and the UK's relationship with the European Union continues to be a big topic for discussion. Earlier today, so Thursday, I gave evidence alongside Benedict Zucchi from BDP to the House of Lords European Services Subcommittee. Um, we talked a lot about um, the importance of talent from the UK and Europe being able to move around. Uh, we talked about how procurement could be improved and what the government and industry could do to boost things like exports and to protect and improve standards in the construction industry. Um, all of this is to say there's a lot going on in government. It's the first time in quite a few weeks where our engagement with government hasn't been dominated by COVID-19. Um, it's a really interesting time in politics and I think there's going to be some really quick developments over the next few weeks. Um, as I mentioned previously, we have a weekly political update which you can sign up for on our website. And if you have any questions, drop us an email at public.affairs at riba.org.